We've been saying this for a month. One of Asia's oldest democracies may be in jeopardy. I'm talking about Sri Lanka, the wonder of Asia. The tagline has never sounded so apt. What's happening in Colombo truly inspires wonder and worry. It's just been a month since the Rajapaksas returned and the country is already caught in a battle of authoritarianism and democracy. Yesterday, we told you about the arrest of a sitting MP, Patali Champika Ranavaka, over a petty case, a case that had been dismissed three years ago, but was raked up again to arrest him. We told you that the former health minister of Sri Lanka, Rajita Senaratne, could be the next in line. And sure enough, today, the same man has filed an anticipatory bail application. And these two are not the only ones. The entire Sri Lankan opposition has united in condemning the Rajapaksas. They say the crackdown has already begun. I'll start with the Speaker of the Sri Lankan Parliament, Karu Jaisuria. He says, and I'm quoting, the arrest has violated due procedure upheld by the current parliament. Such haphazard arrests will propagate anxiety and distress. The Deputy Speaker of the Lankan Parliament too has issued a statement pointing out a breach of convention in Ranavaka's arrest. These two were joined by Sri Lanka's former Minister of Economic Reforms, who says that revenge politics of the Rajapaksa regime has begun in style. Now, we understand that most of these men are opposition lawmakers and do not wish to project a selective situation of what's happening in Sri Lanka. But do allow me to digress and talk to you about another case. Another person is behind bars on charges that are hard to buy. I'm talking about the Swiss Embassy staffer. We do not know much about what's happening happening to her except the fact that she is being subjected to medical tests today she was again taken to the institute of mental health in colombo colombo's chief magistrate has ordered the swiss embassy to hand over phones and sim cards that belong to this woman and her husband to the cid but somebody else is playing victim the country's president, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, he says this entire Swiss embassy saga is an effort to discredit his election win. He says he is the real victim of this episode. He says her abduction was orchestrated to create tensions between Sri Lanka and Switzerland. These are his words. Now, I want to present both sides of the story, so let me take you back in time. The late 1980s, early 1990s, the Rajapaksas were prominent public figures. Scores of Sri Lankan Tamils were fleeing the ethnic conflict in the country. Many of them found asylum in Switzerland. And till date, reports say that there are branches of the LTTE, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Ilam, located in Switzerland. This is a press release on your screen by the Sri Lankan Foreign Ministry, which confirms this. And it gets more interesting. This month, on the 3rd of December, Switzerland's federal court ruled that the LTTE is not a criminal organization. It says that 12 Swiss Tamils were acquitted on charges filed by the Office of the Attorney General. These headlines say that. This was just days after Nishantar Silva, the cop probing charges of war crimes against the Rajapaksas, fled Sri Lanka. Now that leaves me with a question. What is it that the Rajapaksas fear? The revival of a militant organization? A global conspiracy by the opposition? Whatever it is, they clearly are not taking any chances. From arresting opposition members to conducting medical tests on Sri Lankan locals, looking at the trajectory this present crisis is taking, it will not be easy to repair the damage to Sri Lanka's democratic institutions.